Thanks for joining me again. Uh, this is gonna be a long video. I'm gonna design a lamp that is an octopus. It's laser cut wood, it's an octopus, and I'm gonna share the entire process with you from design to cutting, all of the uh, problems I run into and everything. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the actual Fusion 360 design process. I did this the other day, so I'm narrating it after the fact. Uh, I'm gonna try in the future to actually narrate them while I go, but uh, here it is. Here's the design from beginning to end on the design. Let's get started. I start with a new component called bulb. This is gonna be just a visual representation of the bulb that I wanna use. It's one of those cool looking Edison bulbs, um, but it doesn't have to be exact. I start by drawing out a vertical line that I know is uh, 110 millimeters tall. That's the height of the bulb. I know the bulb is also um, 88 millimeters wide, so then I'm going to draw a circle that is 88 millimeters wide. First, I can turn that into a construction line so that I can use it without editing it. And I draw this circle 88 millimeters wide. And here, I go to move it vertically and uh, I guess I bumped the mouse and trying to get it back to center proved to be difficult because my computer was a bit laggy so just undid that and here we go we have an 88 millimeter wide sphere on a 110 millimeter tall line so the next part is going to be the socket I've measured a uh, socket that I have here I know that it's 33 millimeters wide, so I'm going to make, I'm just making a profile of the bulb here, so I need half of that. So, you know, uh, you know, 16 and a half millimeters. And then I'm going to draw a curve from the side of the bulb here down to the socket. Doesn't have to be exact. This is just so that I have some kind of a visual representation of scale so that I can zoom out and look at it and say, you know, I like that or I don't like that, etc. So I've created this curve. Here I go drawing a new line down the middle. I could have just undone that construction line, I guess. But here's where I ran into my first problem. I couldn't trim off half that circle. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or what, but what I wanted to do was trim half that circle away so that I could do this revolve just using the, the right hand side faces around that axis and I couldn't select just those faces I tried it nothing happens trying to revolve the whole thing so I um, you know I tried it a couple different ways it didn't work uh, I thought maybe I just didn't get my line lined up right so I deleted the line I created a new one making sure that I'm touching on the circle and all the way down there, and still I could not trim off that left-hand side. You know, it just wouldn't let me. So what I did was, uh, instead of fighting with it for too much longer, I just deleted that whole circle. That really confused me for a bit, but I wasn't going to spend too much time worrying about it. Instead, what I'm going to do is just draw an arc there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said before, I'm not like mating things up to this perfectly. It's just for visual representation, you know, so that I can say, oh, that's pretty or ugly or whatever. So I create an arc, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to revolve that around the central axis. Go to like a 45 degree angle and select that central axis, and poof, we have... A bulb. I've sped up the footage now about 130% hoping this won't take quite as long but you'll still be able to see what I've been doing. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to model the socket just for a visual representation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that sucker over and Get to work modeling that out. I don't know if this is really the best uh, method for doing this, but 
I'm just drawing and extruding or pulling uh, the pieces here according to measurements that I did here on a, an example socket that I have sitting around. I just have my caliper sitting here and I'm measuring. Um, <clears throat> the first thing I try to do is just pull that out and it, it brought that curve with it I didn't want. So I'm creating a new circle here a couple millimeters larger than the bottom of that bulb. And I'm going to extrude that out a bit here. So there we go. We have the beginnings of our socket. It comes out and then it gets fatter. And then, uh, so I'm just, I'm just drawing, I'm choosing that the bottom face, I'm drawing a circle and I'm dra and I'm extruding these by the amounts that I'm measuring on this socket that I have here. And there are little bevels and chamfers on these edges, but I'm not going to model that in. Again, I'm not mating anything to this, uh, exactly. So I'm just kind of modeling out the rough shape. So there's an additional piece on the bottom here that I'm going to extrude out. The right distance. That's actually a curved piece, which I'll adjust here in a moment, you'll see. But first there's a little, like a little nipple on the bottom that the actual cable goes through. So I'm gonna extrude that out while it's nice and easy. And, poof, that's done. So this curve here, you could just push-pull that visually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a, uh, a chamfer. And I'm going to just drag it till it looks... There we go. Looks pretty. There we have it. There is the... <coughs> there's the bulb itself for visual representation. Awesome. That's going to help considerably. I'll go ahead and save this project now that I've gotten to a point that I don't want to recreate. Now I'm going to start working on the actual octopus. I create a new component, and this is going to be the base of the octopus. This is where the tentacles are going to attach to the bulb. So I call it octobase, and I start drawing here. I'm going to I'm going to start from the top of the circle. So I choose circle, I choose the correct plane, and I get started. I draw out the central whole circle, and then I don't know how big I want this. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I've got an idea, but I'm just kind of guessing. So I create a second circle and kind of estimate that I want it about this big, and there we go. Here are the basics of our of our base. And I create a uh, user variable here called stock. This is going to be the thickness of our material. I've chose three millimeters, and that's because I know that I can get material in three millimeters. If we get the material and measure it, and it's two millimeters, two and a half millimeters, 3.2 millimeters, etc., I can change that and it'll update the entire drawing, and that kicks ass. So that's why I do that. Picked up that tip from. Uh, Taylor Stein at Autodesk. So here we go. I have extruded it. Looks good. Beautiful. Pushed and pulled that out to the stock. You just type stock in the uh, distance and boom. That is the number that I said earlier. So now what I need to do is I need to put the actual wedges in here that the legs are going to press fit into. And uh, so I start by just drawing this this rectangle out. I don't know how deep I need them, but I know how wide I need them to be. So I just kind of eyeball how deep it is, and then for the width I use stock, because I want the width to be the same width as the material I'm using, so it's nice and snug. So there we go. And I run into a problem here that even though I've drawn this, oh, I want it to be centered. So I, I center, I draw a center line here, and I know to center this rectangle on it, what I need to do is I need to dimension from one side of this rectangle to that center line to be half the distance 
of the width of the stock. So I just do stock divided by 2. So I dimension that to there, and then I type in stock divided by 2, and that will center it so that line is right in the middle. It's half the, half the width, and bam, centered. Then I run into the problem that I can't extrude it. I can't push or pull that face for some reason. No idea why. I guess I drew it on the wrong plane or something. Um, again, I'm still learning Fusion 360, so we're gonna you're gonna see a lot of this like goofing up. So I delete that line. I delete that rectangle, and I start clicking around, seeing if maybe I can make sure it's on the right plane. And still, I'm not feeling real good about this. And I think you know maybe I need to look at this. Maybe I need to look at this tree over here and see what's going on. I've drawn a line and it's still, I'm kind of guessing, and I look, I expand this out and I see I've got two sketches. I don't want two sketches for this body, so I delete one. And I go back to the original sketch and I figure maybe this will work. And once I start modifying the sketch, it looks like I'm editing the original, which is good. That's what I want. So I add that central line, turn it into a construction line uh, by hitting X on the keyboard. I'm drawing out my rectangle again, again eyeballing how deep towards the center I want it, but for width, I want that to be stock. So I type stock in for the width, and there we go, there's our notch. Again, I need that to be centered, so you're going to see me do this again, where I dimension from one side to the center, and that's stock divided by two. If I just put in stock, it would move it all the way over. I don't want that, I want it halfway over, so it's perfectly centered. And then I decide to move it down into the wood a little bit more because I want it to uh, I want it to nest pretty deep in there and then I stop the sketch and that allows me to select that face and push pull it right through bam done once I get a grip on it poof Cuts it, it's beautiful. So the next step is pretty cool. I learned this part of this trick here from John Saunders at uh, NYC CNC here. I'm gonna choose, um, I'm gonna choose to make a pattern, a circular pattern, and instead of trying to select it up there, I go down here to my timeline and I select that last piece. And then for the axis, I choose my axis and I can see it starts adding them perfectly. And here I try to decide, do I want eight for eight legs of the octopus? Or do I want 12 maybe to give some options on how you place them or maybe some reinforcements? And ultimately I decided to go with 12. I liked how 12 looked. And boom, our base is done and that looks good. I am excited about this. That looks fantastic. Let's look at it on our bulb. And of course, looking at it on our bulb, what we see is that it is too high vertically. I want it down on the, on the assembly of the uh, socket. So I'm gonna move it down. I grab it, I move it. There's, there's a better way to do this. I know there is, where you're creating a new construction plane, I guess, but I'm not sure how to do that. I'm not comfortable with that yet. So this is the way I did it for this. And then looking at it, I realized I need the central hole of that to be variable as well. Because what if I get a socket in the mail that's a millimeter smaller? I don't want it wiggling around in there. Um, or a millimeter bigger, then I'm screwed. So I want that central hole there to be variable as well. So I go back to my drawing here, and this stumped me. I could not figure out how to take a circle that's already there and dimension it redimension it with a user parameter. So I created a user parameter called uh, socket that is supposed to be that that diameter there. And I'm checking a test here. I, I tried dimensioning it and just typing it in. And what it did was it created a new circle. And I can see that circle changing. So my Stuff is kind of working there, but it's not updating the 3D model. 
So I need to figure out how to dimension this circle that I've already drawn to a user variable. And you can see I'm kind of clicking around, confused. I don't know what I'm doing here. I start looking and it looks, I realize there's two circles there, so it had created a new one whenever I did the dimension, I guess. So I go back to edit this drawing and stare at it for a while, not really knowing what the heck I'm going to do. I figure there's got to be a way to like edit the dimensions of an existing thing, but I just don't know how. Um, so I delete that new circle. It's not doing me any good. I click on the original one and try to dimension it again. I try, you know, dragging it different ways. I tried uh, clicking on the actual numbers of the dimension to see if maybe it would pop up in, you know, a, an input box. Um, I, I even tried, uh, like, going from the center over and dimensioning, and, you know, I just couldn't, so I deleted it. And I just drew a new circle. And I didn't know if that was going to work. I thought maybe I was going to have to start over. But it did. I drew a new circle, I dimensioned it to the socket size, I stopped my sketch, and I re-extruded that. I, I did the press pull again to cut through with that new one. And I set that one to the stock depth, so it cuts through the depth of the stock. And there we go, the finished part. So it's a good idea to test things. What I'm going to do here is I, um, I go and I change that central socket size down to something like six millimeters and poof there you go it's variable I love this I love the parameter driven nature of this this is fantastic and it's gonna allow me as long as I hold on to this file to adapt it to different things so what's next um, you know I I need two of these I know that I need two of these at least I'm trying to decide at this point if I want three or if I want them to be identical or what. So what I do is I copy this, and then I go up to the main assembly and I paste it. And that creates uh, a copy, but these are linked. If I adjust one, if I modify one, it modifies the other. And that's great. That's what I want. So I just move it down, I say OK, and boom, I have two of them. And it's beautiful, and I'm so happy. Now at this point in time... I went into this whole thing where I tried to create a third one that was going to be different, and ultimately I decided I didn't need it. So uh, I'm going to cut that whole section out of this video, and we're just going to jump straight to after that. So to create the tentacle, I create a new component, always a new component, every piece a new component. You know, I'm not even really sure why, but uh, John Saunders at NYC CNC. It's kind of drilled that into my head, and I like that I can go back and adjust things easily, much more easily when they're new components. Um, so I've been I've been following that. So everything's a new component, and I go to my side view and I just start drawing a curve here that's going to be my tentacle. I know that I've got one slot lined up there perfectly well with that axis, so um, I'm designing this actually to be lined up central to that slot. And I'm using the curve tool and I'm drawing out a tentacle. Just purely eyeballing it here. There are no measurements. I've got kind of a sketch and an idea in my head, uh, but, but there are no measurements. I just know what I want it to look like. And I click it out. You have to do like a little tiny tip on there if you want a nice sharp point. Just clicking out these curves, and I know that I want a flat piece on the bottom. So I get down here to the bottom, and I find a place where I think looks good, and I hit enter and in that line. And then I create, go and I, I'm going to do a new spline, and I'm going to create this bottom curve here. This bottom curve goes around here down to that flat spot. Then I hit enter. And now I just have to draw some straight lines 
to close this in. So I connect these two dots here, and then I come down to the bottom with the line tool, and I connect these two dots. And we have something I can press pull. So now we're going to uh, save, of course. And I press pull this face by the thickness of stock. I just type in stock. And that should, in theory, be a tentacle. Now I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, that doesn't quite look right for a number of reasons. One, if we look real close here, we can see it's offset to that slot. We don't want it offset to that slot. Actually, it doesn't make a bit of difference, but it, I didn't want it offset to that slot, and I wanted to learn how to fix it. So I designed it right down the center of that slot. How do I fix that to be offset from the slot? So it'll be centralized to it. When I press pull it, so I undid my press pull, when I press pull it, I look through the options here, and I see that I can expand from both sides instead of one side, and I start testing. So I do stock, and I see it did the stock width on both sides, which makes it too wide. So I do stock divided by 2. So it does half of the width of the stock out of each side, which equals the width of the stock. Boy, that sounds confusing, but it makes sense, I promise. And now I've got a perfectly centered one. So I'm trying to get my head around what this looks like. And so I decide to do a pattern real quick just to visualize. I don't need a bunch of copies. I only need one copy, but I want to see what it looks like. So I select the entire body for the pattern. And I choose that, again, that central axis. And I start looking at it, and I can already tell these are way too big. Like, ridiculously too big. I pull it to the side and sit back and think, that looks dumb. There we go. Looks dumb. Lesson learned, though. That's how you work, right? The best, sometimes the best way to get something good is to just start making something bad, and then you can easily spot what needs to be fixed. You can look at this and say, those are too big. You know, that's easy. So um, I save this one as reference. I create a new component, obviously. Everything's a new component. And in this new component, I'm going to draw them the size that I want them to be. So I start here and I do the same process again, the exact same process. I start at the top, I use this spline tool, and I just start eyeballing it. And you can see I'm going much more petite, a little more dainty with this one. Because I really want that bulb to be like the main mass of the octopus. And you know, the, the, those giant tentacles just look ridiculous. So I'm drawing this out. I come down to my flat spot. I'm already much, much happier with how this is looking. And I come down here. And I draw the under curve. And I go down to the, uh, to the flat spot. Switch to a line tool and uh, connect those so that we can get a polygon or a, a face. Oh, I made those not lined up. Whoops. So I delete that bottom curve and I create a new one. And I decide to go with a slightly different shape. And then I bring it down to this flat spot. And now we have a face that I can then press and pull. Again, selecting to come out from both sides, half the width of the stock. And then I zoom out, and I look at this and I say, does that look better? Do those proportions look better? Kind of compare the two. And hey, why not? Let's do another pattern to kind of preview what this would look like if they were all the same. So far, I'm, I think I'm happy with this. Uh, size. So we do a pattern, circular pattern, select the body, select the central axis, and start expanding those out. 
and then I look at it, and yes, I am very happy with this. It's not perfect. I kind of wanted a little more organic feel, uh, but that's fine. And they're not lined up here perfectly because I only did eight and I've got 12 slots. But it doesn't matter because I undo it. So the next part is to design multiples of these so that you can have some variation. And I'm going to speed that up because it's literally the exact same process over and over and over. So I delete that monstrosity and I get started making new ones. So let's watch that at high speed. So for this next part, what we have to do is we actually have to cut notches out of the tentacles so that they slide in. And how I do that is I select the body of the tentacle, I go to um, Combine, and I tell it, it's, imp it's important that you tell it to keep the tool. Um, but I, I'm going to use this even though it looks like it moves, it cuts fine. I'm going to use those pieces there, select those as the tools to cut, and you can see it cuts notches in the uh, tentacle. And that's all you have to do. And you just have to do that over and over and over. So here I am just double checking that I got it all right, making sure everything looks good. I kind of undid it to, to make sure, and then, yep. Looks good. Time for the next one. And uh, of course I save in between each. And uh, I hide those so that I can look at it and double check, bring them back in. I don't want to go through the whole process and realize I'm, I messed it up on every tentacle because you do have to repeat it over and over. And so there we go. You just repeat that for each one. The body of the tentacle and then both of those pieces as the tool. Here you can see I did it wrong because the tool is bright red and I cancel that out and I do it again. Select the tentacle and then select those as the tool. I think I I wasn't sure that you could select both at the same time so I did this in two steps. I cut the top one and, and then I cut the bottom one. Oh I tried it, there we go. So it cuts both at the same time. I don't know why it insists on showing the original position of that base piece. I don't know if I'm doing that wrong. I'm sure I'll figure that out soon so that it won't be happening anymore. But, you know, it, it made me feel like I was goofing it up there. And here we go. Uh, just two more left to go, so I'll speed that up. So here's what the final design looks like. It's probably not what you expected. You probably expected all those tentacles to be out where they should be. But this is so that we can cut it. You'll get it in the next video. So there you have it. The design is done. This is ready to be uh, in the next video. What we'll do is we'll arrange it to export it as a drawing and we'll do some test cuts and see if we can't assemble it. And then we'll take it a step further and update the design.